welcome back. It was almost an oh by the way part of the president's trip overseas. The future of the government spying program is at stake. President Obama announced his plan to end the NSA's bulk collection of U.S. phone records in a move that was welcomed by many Democrats and even some Republicans. I'm joined now by, of course, Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon. He's been one of the NSA's toughest critics. Senator, welcome to Meet the Press. Thank you. Very quickly, we go through the president's basic reforms with bullet points here. No more bulk phone records will remain at the phone companies. NSA will no longer collect and hold these records. And unless an emergency, officials must obtain a court order. Is this enough to win the credibility back of the American people? This starts towards what Ben Franklin had in mind, which is making sure that we can have security without sacrificing our liberties. Now, there's certainly more to do. For example, I believe the president ought to make the transition right away to ending bulk phone. So he shouldn't. Have, on Thursday, he signed another court order approving the bulk collection for another 90 days while Congress, while you guys decide. Uh, I know Patrick Leahy said, stop doing this. You would say, stop signing these orders right now. Right now. Second, we've got to fix this backdoor search loophole in the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. The, that unless is, an emergency? Well, what this is, is this allows the government to look at the emails of law-abiding Americans. That needs to be fixed. And then I believe strongly we ought to ban all dragnet surveillance on law-abiding Americans, not just phone records, but also medical records, purchases, and others. Why should I feel comfortable of corporations like Verizon and AT&T holding these records? Why should I feel somehow more comfortable that they're doing it over the government? Well, first of all, what the government has been doing is running a federal human relations database. When the government has the information about who you called, when you called, they know a lot about your private life. Yeah, so does Verizon and so does Google. And there ought to be tough privacy standards there as well. Now, the Phone companies, of course, have a long history of dealing with court orders. And as you mentioned, that's a key part of the president's uh, program. And we're certainly going to be watchdogging the way the phone companies handle this. Uh, Edward Snowden has praised this as well, saying it's a good first step. Where are you on Snowden? Is he a, a whistleblower? Is he a criminal? And if he's brought back to the United States, should charges be brought up against him? Chuck, I decided a long time ago, if somebody was charged criminally, I wasn't going to be just doing running commentary. But the bottom line is, this is a debate that shouldn't have started that way. It should have been started with but the But did he commit a crime? Leadership. Did he commit a crime? I think that's something for lawyers. You're in the United States Senate. You and, have this. You I'm cannot not, tell me whether he I'm committed a, a crime? I'm not a prosecutor. I'm not a prosecutor. And I, I can tell you, years ago when I was in the House, I asked the tobacco executives right. whether nicotine was addictive. They were under oath. They said no. And the prosecutor said they couldn't prove intent. Here's what the bottom line is for me. The American people deserve a straight information from the intelligence leadership. If the American people don't get it, you can bet there'll be other uh, situations like this. You were the first one. You sort of you made public what you did there with James Clapper. There's some people that thought Clapper should have been brought up on some charges because that he technically lied under oath to Congress. He used some weasel words. It took him a while to apologize for those comments. You had to bring this up. Is there anything else that we don't know that you know that uh, would somehow make the American public feel insecure about their privacy? First of all, I believe that we can make sure that liberty and security are not mutually exclusive. We can have both. That's what Ben Franklin right, But Is there anything about. else out there that we don't know about that would actually be violating our privacy? We certainly need to make those reforms that I just outlined. What was particularly troubling about what James Clapper did is he wouldn't even correct it after the fact. In other words, this issue had been put in the public square, not by the Congress, but by, in effect, the intelligence leadership. They stated something in a public hearing that was flagrantly inaccurate. They wouldn't correct it. You still have fact. confidence in Clapper? I think that we need an upgrade in the intelligence leadership. I will tell you that the new man who's been nominated for the NSA, Admiral Rogers, yeah. he understands they have a big rebuilding job to do. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat from Oregon, thanks for being on Thank here. Thank you. Coming up, our Kevin Tibbles visits the Iowa town where Cold War history was made and now